In this video we're going to take a look at the export challenge on Hack the Box. This is an easy forensics challenge and the description says we spotted a suspicious connection to one of our servers and immediately took a memory dump. Can you figure out what the attackers were up to? So let's download the file. Um, yep, open, open this up. We'll take a copy of the file and save it in export enter in our password see it's taking a little while, it's a 536 meg file so bigger than we normally deal with let's um, analyze it do a usual check, see what type of file it is just see raw data um, strings, let's try and grab strings greater than 10 and See, there's lots of strings in there, which we'd expect because of the size of the file. What about if we do that and try to grep hack the box, HTB? Okay, don't see anything. Well, we do see hack the box, but doesn't look um, particularly interesting. So, um, what else are we going to be able to do here? Well. We can look at the tool volatility. Let's check the help here. I've not used volatility myself in quite a long time, and I was never an expert with it. So we'll see how it goes. We need to um, get a profile, I guess, here. So let's um, see if we can get a bit more help on this first. We'll look for a volatility cheat sheet. Yep, I know I've spelled everything wrong here, but Google will do the hard work for me. All right, let's check this one out. Let's check the GitHub one as well. I always click this one every time and then download the PDF. And I'm like, oh, I just want to look at a web page, please. Um, this mentions if you want something as fast as possible, use auto volatility, which is something I've never actually used. Um, and it'll use most of the important plugins. Could use a lot of space depending. I'm going to test that out at the end because I've never used that before. But um, I guess that's kind of going to be cheating. Let's. Um, Let's uh, assume that there isn't an automated tool for us to do this, first of all. Although, I mean, volatility is kind of automating um, a lot of the process anyway. So, um, we need to discover a profile. Where did I just see that there? Discover a profile. Okay, so we can use this image scan. Let's try that. Let me minimize this so you can see the terminal better. We'll do volatility image scan dash F and then the file. Oh, other way round, I think. Volatility dash F. Image scan. No. Uh, what was it? Ah, image info. <laughs> I mixed up the KDBG scan and image info. Cool. Uh, all right, let's go back to uh to this one. Image info. Um. Let's search and define a profile. While it's doing that, let's see what's going to be next. Mentions here the difference between this. All right, doesn't look like it's going to be important to us. We can find the OS information as well. After this, if it's, it looks like it is a Windows one just by the name. We can extract some hashes. So that might be worth doing. Let's check out this. Um, command reference as well. So we have a command reference here. Image info. So it's the first thing that we've got running, and it should be coming up with this for us. Yep, there we go. All right. So suggested profiles, and it's suggesting Windows 7 64-bit as the main suggestion. So now we'll be passing whenever we run volatility, we'll be passing the dash f the file uh, dash profile equals this win7 and then we want to do some of these plugins so what else do we have here windows print desktop windows um, strings proc dump let's okay that's going to dump our process let's list the process uh, ps list and we've listed the processes there See it don't see anything out of the ordinary, this dump it, but um 
Alright, what else do we have? Let's go back to our uh, command reference here. So the command reference is very similar, but it looks a bit here. Process list, alright, that's the first thing they're doing. Process tree as well. Process scan. DLL list, DLL dump. Command scan. Uh, for searches for commands that attackers entered through a console shell. Sounds interesting. Let's try that. There's no autocomplete, is there? No. Okay. Uh, command scan. Okay. We have something of interest. We have a PowerShell command here. So let's grab that and. We're gonna need to, we can well we don't really need to URL decoder, it. there's not too much in it, but let's uh yeah, let's go to Cyberchef. And let's paste this in. So URL decode. Oh not URL encode, get rid of that, throw it in the bin. URL decode. Um, not too much change in there, but we can see we have some base64 here as well. Let's um, let's open this in a new tab and let's base64 decode this from base64. Ah, there we go. That was a nice easy flag. Um, so what was happening here is this was echoing IEX, which is going to call basically Internet Explorer with um, this URL and the URL had the base64 encoded flag as a parameter um, to this PowerShell file presumably well let's see if this does exist actually no um, okay and I guess bitly probably doesn't allow just PowerShell files to be stored anyway um, so it was Echoing that, it was echoing it to this file, to this PS1, to start up so that this would execute on startup. And um, yeah, there's our flag. Let's see um, what else we could do though. Let's see if we can um, play around with some more volatility commands. So let's go back to our command reference. What was the last thing that we executed? We did the command scan. Okay. Consoles is another option. Um, might be. It looks like it might give us a similar result, but let's try it out. Was it console? Or consoles. Consoles, obviously. Okay. Um, yeah, looking similar. We have this dumper. It also found on-screen memory dumper, which is obviously used to create this challenge. We also have then our script, um, PowerShell script. Is this two different PowerShell scripts? No, no, they're both they're both the same. Okay. Um, all right. What else can we do? Privs. See what process privileges prev, uh, present. Check the environment variables. Version info. Process memory. Proc dump. Mem dump. All right. Um, let's see about this hashes and passwords. Just out of interest. Oh, and the Windows info.info, .info. what's going to be the difference here? This is, a, this is a Volatility 3 plugin. Let's try it. Oh, I'm using Volatility 2, so I guess that's not going to work for us. Uh, volatility 2 is just saying use image info, which is what we used anyway. Okay. All right, so, so volatility three, yeah, some different, some different syntax there. All right, let's uh, hash dump, cache dump, and LSA dump. All right, let's do the hash dump. And you can see there, it's dumped the hashes for the administrator, the guest, and user. Let's go back here. Uh, 
uh, command line, so they're checking similar sort of things as, as we did there with the command scan. User assist services registry hive, so we can print the available hives. Let's check that one as well. Hive list. You can see there it's listed our hives here, nt-user.dat and we can then dump these as well, dump the hives, dump all hives if we want to grab those file system mount, okay uh, malware checks, alright cool um, I think we've played around with some of those now, let's um, see about cracking those hashes as well so let's open a file called hashes and let's paste these in here. We actually want to grab this part of the hash. I believe for hashcat we don't we don't need to enter the full format. We'll see here in a second. Let's grab this as well. These two are the same anyway, the administrator and the guest password. Let's save that and let's check out the Hashcat help page. Our modes is going to be a thousand. Um, I can't see where that is though. Let me grep out NTLM. You can see here a thousand. So if we do Hashcat dash M one thousand hashes and then let's pass in um, sec lists passwords probable top 1575 now let's do probable top 12,000 try and run that and we can leave that running in the background I'm not too sure how long it'll take I normally don't run this these uh, I wouldn't run hashcat normally inside a VM I normally run it outside to run on my um, graphics card but uh, okay stopped exhausted so it didn't find anything oh it found password password was the 88 one it didn't find the other one which was this one um, we could use a bigger word list or we could go to somewhere like crack station and paste that in there oh crack station does it do NTLM no. Um, oh yeah, it does. It's just not giving us the option to crack the hash yet because it wants us to prove we're not a robot, and it's not very fast at loading the capture. Apparently. Um, all right. So, well, we know that, that password is password. We'll um, while this while the crack station is loading up, let's close down our volatility. There, we're going to go and check out. Oh, there we go. I'm going to go check out this. Okay, yeah, so it's just blank. So the guest in the administrator had a blank password. I thought it recognized as 3 1. Um, and the the um, the user had a password, just the password was password. All right, so let's close down those hashes. Let's go and check out this auto, auto volatility. as it may be something worth um, testing out in future CTFs. Grab that. And let's uh, clone it first then. Git clone and cd into auto volatility. See what we've got in here. All right, we've just got this Python script and it says run Python auto volatility dash f and the file and dash d for the output directory. It also suggests um, using image info, but it says it will use it automatically. But if you if you know it or you need to specify it, you can do. You can set threads. You can also set pl additional plugins you want to run. All right, so it looks pretty cool. Let's test it out. Let's do Python auto volatility dash f dot dot slash and no nope, dot dot slash dot dot slash export. Where's our file? Um, one second. Yeah, it's in here. Win. Dot raw. Okay. Dot dot slash export. Let's paste it in here. Missing 
parenthesis in let's do Python 2 and it's saying auto volatility dash f to the mem file set a directory option so we'll set our directory as dot dot slash yeah that's fine and let's run that let's run in image info to begin with rather than doing that with python 2 we could have tried running like 2 to th uh, 2 to 3 to convert it from python 2 to python 3 but um, it's probably not worth the, the hassle there might be other issues in doing that so it's running through the various commands it's dumping certs dumping registry dumping files uh, service diff it's getting a clipboard no some no such option dump directory okay some of the commands aren't supported with this profile consoles though should be supported maybe it's trying to use volatility 3 or cuz we've run the consoles one with that profile and it worked fine the command does not support the profile hmm. all right i'm pretty sure it does like let's um have a look in our okay it's not actually dumped anything here now oh it's dumped them in here even though we specified our directory as being back one Let's see. Um, is there a file or see dump files? I see it's dumped all the files here. See different file types. We've got executable files and things there. Um, okay, we can cd into the hive scan. And cut that out hive scan dot text all right yes yeah, giving us offsets we could cd into clipboard all right yeah i don't really um know exactly what this means I guess it's telling us locations of things um all right well despite these errors i'm not too sure what they're about it seems to be actually executing and dumping what it needs to Let's go back here actually and run tree. And um, it looks like it's doing what it should do. But um, I think I'll probably still just go through the guides in future and um, try to get an idea what each command is doing and what the output is and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's been this challenge export. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.